Monday night. It's time for prophetic mentorship Monday. And um, I'm going to be teaching on um, the fact that prophets do more than prophesy. Uh, the fact that prophets do more than prophesy as you're coming in. Uh, don't forget to like this page, like this post, and share. Let me know that you're hearing me okay. Hey there, Cassandra. Let me know that you hear me okay. You know me. I'm like, I want it to be clear, so I might have to put on my headset. But uh, if you hear me okay, that's good. All right, so here's what we want you to do. Like this page, like this post, and share. I think I'm going to give you about 20 reasons. Last time I looked, uh, are 20 things that prophets do more than just prophesy, okay? Uh, right now in the body of Christ. Hey, everyone. Okay, cool. Uh, right now in the body of Christ, what's up, Marsha? Um, people are basing uh, the prophets. Hey there. Good to see you. Uh, people are basing the functions of a prophet and the, you know, what the prophet does, all of that. They're basing that off of, um, essentially just prophes uh, prophesiers. Um, the standards that they are using today just relate more to being to those who are prophesiers and to those who actually are in the office of the prophet, the agent, uh, an agent of the kingdom. And so uh, today what I want to do is talk to you about uh, what it really means to be a prophet um, and how it, we really do more than prophesy. All right. Good to see you guys. So do me a favor. Let's uh, up these numbers. If you are listening to me right now and you see me right now, go ahead and like this page, like this post and share. OK. Hello. 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 Like the post, like the page and share. Like, like and share. All right. Here we go. And let's just get down to the nitty gritty. Let's begin talking. Uh, if we have to go to scripture, if I have to tell you about scripture, well, one of the main scriptures that I'm going to tonight. Well, first off, let me say this. Ah, hey there. Good to see y'all. Um, let me let me mention this. Don't forget, prophetic convocation is coming up. Prophetic convocation 2018 um, is coming up here in Jacksonville, Florida. I'm trying to see if I have a graphic on that. I may not have it. I don't know. Anyway, um, it's coming up. Just go um, any of these pages. You should be able to see that. Go to Eventbrite. Look up Prophetic Convocation 2018. It's going to be spectacular. That's when prophets from all across the world come together and meet me here in Jacksonville so that we can educate, enlighten, nurture, uh, and so that they can really have a place to just be themselves and to declare, I am a prophet. If that's you, I want you to meet me here in Jacksonville for Prophetic Convocation 2018. That's the end of September, September 27th through the uh, 30th, I believe. It's from that Thursday through that Sunday. It's a spectacular time. I'm telling you, if you're a prophet, think you're a prophet, prophetic psalmist, prophetic intercessor, prophetic worshiper. It's a dynamic time. If you've never been here, I'm telling you, you've got to meet us here in Jacksonville. All right. Jacksonville, Florida, the end of September. But what I'm going to do tonight is teach about uh, the fact that prophets do more than prophesy. Okay. That's what we're going to be talking about tonight. On my screen next to me, uh, you see uh, the prophetic mandate boot camp that we're, that's taking place in Val, uh, I was going to say Valdosta, but it's in Thomasville. It's in Thomasville, Georgia, coming up the end of August, uh, like August 25th. Myself, uh, one of my spiritual daughters, a uh, great prophet of God, Prophet Katabia, uh, Henry will be with me in, where am I going? We're going to Thomasville, Thomasville, Georgia. All right. That's where we're going. If you're anywhere near, if you're in Valdosta, Tallahassee, uh, South Georgia, North Florida, meet us there at the uh, college there. It's going to be spectacular. Hey there, Danette. Good to have you. All right. Here we go. This is what we're doing. Don't forget right now, if you know anybody who's prophetic, text them, uh, inbox them and tell them to get on right now. And what I need all of you to do is if you're watching this, like the page, like the post and do share. Let's share. And right now I'm going to talk about 20 things that prophets do be, uh, besides prophesy. OK, 20 things that prophets do besides prophesy, besides 
uh, releasing prophecy. Hey, Lisa, good to see you. You should come and visit us in Jacksonville one afternoon. Lisa, I think you came one time before, right? Come on out to the push. All right, so let's get to the nitty gritty of it. Now, I'm probably going to go to about two, no, I'm going to go to about three scriptures. Um, but first, let's just go to Jeremiah. Jeremiah 1 and 10, uh, let's go 9. Um, then the Lord reached out his hand, touched my mouth and said to me, behold, I have put my words into your mouth. See, I have appointed you today over nations and kingdoms to uproot and to tear down, to destroy and overthrow, to build and plant. And the word of the Lord came to me asking, what do you see, Jeremiah? I see a branch of an almond tree, I replied. All right, that's one scripture. That's Jeremiah 1 and 10. You can write that down. Jeremiah 1 and 10. Go ahead and write that down. I also want you to go to, uh, or you can write this down, Eli, 1 Kings, 1 Kings, uh, let's go to 17, 1 Kings 17, 1 Kings 17. Um, Let's start at verse one. And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, as the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. Ah, and the word of the Lord came unto him saying, get thee hence and turn thee eastward and hide thyself by the brook Cherith that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook. And I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according unto the word of the Lord, for he wept, he went and dwelt by the brook Cherith that is before Jordan. All right, that's one scripture. Okay, so we got uh, Jeremiah 1. We have first Kings, and then I'm always going to go to second Chronicles 2020, second Chronicles 2020. Uh, it, it, the, the B portion of that says, believe the word of the Lord, you'll be established. Believe the word of the prophet and you shall prosper. All right, let's begin to break this down. Let's begin to talk now about what happens or 20. I'm going to give you at least 20 things that prophets do besides and beyond prophecy besides and beyond prophesying. All right, what you have to understand is that prophets do more than prophecy, prophesy. But if you are of the mindset that prophets only prophesy, then I'm telling you, you don't have a good understanding of what a prophet is. Because right now in the body of Christ, we have put so much emphasis on prophesying and releasing prophecy that we are literally calling prophesiers who just prophesy prophets, and that is not the real deal. So now we've got to begin to give a better foundation of what it means to really be a prophet, and all we have to do is go to the Word of God. I think sometimes we make it more complicated than it is, or we try to make it seem like God did not create prophets to do specific things, and because of this, we begin to water down what it means to be a prophet. All right. Now, let's uh, you know what? Also, um, let's see. First Corinthians. Is that what I want to go to? I've got to do one more thing for you. Um, Okay, so here we go. Ramasheko Robosha. Okay, first Corinthians. Let's go to 14. Um, probably let's go to one. Let's go back to one. First Corinthians 14 and 1. I'm gonna give you basics of prophecy. Um, first Corinthians 14 and 1 says, I earnestly pursue love and eagerly desire spiritual gifts, especially the gift of prophecy. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. Indeed, no one understands him. He utters mysteries in the spirit. Um, and if we go to, yeah, let, let, so you're going to write that down. First Corinthians 14 and one as well. Now, here's what you want to understand. First Corinthians uh, 14, starting at one and, you know, going down to about five or whatever. It really teaches and tells us what basic prophecy is. Okay. 
what basic prophecy is. Hey there, uh, First Corinthians 14 and 1, uh, Kibwana. All right, so basic prophecy is to uh, edify, exhort, and comfort, all right? Basic prophecy, the prophecy that all of us can do as believers to edify, to exhort, and to com comfort, that is basic prophecy, all right? Anybody who's a believer can do this, and this is the type of prophecy that can be instructed or taught as we are giving you an understanding of what it means to edify, to exhort, and to comfort. Are you hearing me? All right. I wrote a book called You Can Prophesy or a guidebook called You Can Prophesy. And you would think that I was telling people how to cuss or I would teach them how to cuss. I'm just telling you how the people of God are. All right. Let me make sure. Um, all right, so you would think that that's maybe what I did, but that's not what I did. What I did was I began to break down scripture and what it means, what basic prophecy means, all right? And so again, when we begin to talk about basic prophecy, we are talking about the kind of prophecy that takes place when we are simply edifying exhorting or comforting, okay? That's what it is. Basic prophecy edifies, exhorts, and comforts. Basic, basic prophecy. This is the type of prophecy that we all can do as believers, all right? This is the type of prophecy that we all can do as believers. I can teach a three-year-old how to prophesy according to basic prophecy levels, because all we're doing is edifying, exhorting, and comforting. So there are some principles of basic prophecy that we are making deeper than it is. And that's why we have, we, we have confused the body of Christ and we have confused what it means to be a prophet versus what it means to be a prophesier versus what it means to be a standard believer who should be able to prophesy. Because all we have to do is use the word of God to prophesy, all right? Basic prophecy to edify, to exhort, and to comfort. Guess what? I can open up the word, or if I've gone to Sunday school for years, if I've gone to Bible study, if the word is in my heart, then I, as a believer, can edify, I can exhort, and I can comfort you according to the word of God that's already in my heart, that's already in my being, and that is basic prophecy, all right? That is basic prophecy. What do I mean by that? That means if, if someone is going through, oh my goodness, let's see, if someone is down and out, just going crazy, I can begin to say, this is how I can edify and edify them through prophecy. I can begin to say, you know, I uh, decree and I declare uh, that God is going to give you peace that surpasses all understanding and that the joy of the Lord is your strength and that the strength of the Lord is your joy. I declare and I decree that God loves you with an unconditional love. And as you draw nearer to him, he's going to draw nearer to you and watch what begins to happen as you hide his word in your heart because God cares for you and he loves you with an unconditional love and he wants the best for you because you got to understand that the blessings of the Lord make it rich and adds no sorrow. Who am I helping today? Who am I helping today? That is basic prophecy, all right? That is basic prophecy. That is the, the, the type of prophecy that I can instruct you on how to do because it's in the word of God, all right? First Corinthians 14 and one, hallelujah. But when we begin to go deeper and we begin to understand that prophets do more than prophesy, that's when we have to begin to look at what 
prophets are called and assigned to do, all right? And how do we find this out? We simply look in the word of God, through, you know, and, and I gave you a couple of scriptures earlier. If some of you want to, you know, put some more up there that I gave you or put the ones, don't put up anything that you think, just put up what I've already told you. We're sticking, I got some parameters today, all right? So we talked about Jeremiah 1 and 10, but now let's go down the list. Let's now begin to go down the list. Don't forget to like this page, like this post and share. So I've given you an example of basic prophecy, what it looks like. Now, if you need more understanding on that, you can go to amazon.com and you can grab my guidebook on prophecy called You Can Prophesy, all right? Go to Amazon and it's on Kindle as well. You Can Prophesy. It will help you out a great deal. All right, now let's go down this list. I'm going to give you about 20, um, 20 other things that prophets do besides prophesy. All right, so if we begin to look at, we know in Jeremiah, one of the things it says is to uproot. So that means prophets are called to uproot systems. Prophets are called to uproot dysfunction. Uh, no matter uh, who you are, if you're a prophet, you're called to do more than prophesy. So one of the things you're called to do is uproot, uproot situations, uh, situations that are out of order, situations that need to come into order. Prophets are called to uproot. All right. Now, I'm not talking about the personality of a prophet. I'm not talking about how you do what you do. I'm simply giving you an understanding of what prophets do above and beyond prophecy. Now, you and yours can work on your personality and how to communicate. Now, if you need help, I can teach you on that. But I'm just talking to you about what prophets do above and beyond prophecy. Amen. Who am I talking to tonight? Are y'all getting this? All right. So don't forget to like this page, like this post and do share. The other thing, prophets tear down. So many times prophets will come into territories. Prophets will come into um, corporations, uh, communities, organizations, and prophets will literally tear down what someone has put up as an idol, what someone has put up as a or built as a demonic structure. All right. Prophets will tear down. And so, you know, again, I'm not talking to you about personalities. Some of some prophets have to work on their personalities because they are nasty and they need to be nicer than they are. Just because we're called to tear down doesn't mean that we have to be nasty about it. Oh, my goodness. I can correct you with a smile on my face, all right? So we uproot, number two, uh, tear down. Prophets are also called to destroy. What does that mean? That means prophets can go into houses, prophets can go into uh, communities, even uh, churches sometimes, and prophets may be called to destroy some things. Now, you have to watch your own dominion and your authority. You've got to know whether or not the, 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 the people have even invited you in to do that. You've got to follow protocol, but even more than that, you've got to understand that prophets do destroy. So you have to begin to stop feeling uh, crazy and, 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 and feeling condemned because you know what God has called and assigned you to do. You just may be in a place where they don't welcome it. You may be in a place where they don't want to see this. All right. And if you're in a place where they don't want to see this, it is up to you to recognize when sometimes you have to what? Click your heels and wipe the dust off your feet and get going somewhere else. Are you hearing me? All right. So that's number three. Number four, prophets are assigned to overthrow as well. Sometimes that mean, that will look very destructive, but prophets are called to overthrow. Prophets are called to, again, overthrow systems, overthrow sometimes relationships. Sometimes prophets are called to um, overthrow things that are completely out of order. All right? We're going somewhere. All right. So the other thing that prophets are called to do, number five, Prophets are called to build, all right? There is a builder's anointing upon prophets, but just because prophets are called to build doesn't mean that every prophet is an, an apostle, nor does it mean that every prophet is an apostolic prophet. 
there's a fine line between apostolic prophets and apostles, all right? Some may, may uh, be apostolic prophets and they will stay right there. And then there are other apostolic prophets who transition into apostleship, all right? Um, but there are also just the mere fact that you're a prophet who understands the global realm that you're called to, prophets are called to build, all right? So don't find it strange where you may have a desire as a prophet to go and help certain apostles or people in your region build because prophets are called to build. So there you may have um, be really successful at building teams. You may be really successful at building systems because that's what prophets are called to do. All right. I'm, I'm currently in the building stage as an apostle here in Jacksonville, uh, in Omaha and in Madison, Florida. And so it's important for me to have prophets who can build because I need those prophets around me who have this up on them, who recognize it as well. All right, that's number five. But number six, prophets are also called and assigned to plant. Prophets are apostolic by nature. You've got to begin to understand this. Prophets are called to plant. All right, number five, you're called to build. Number six, prophets are still called to plant. And so everywhere you go, you have to understand the words on the inside of your mouth, even the prophecies release seeds that will go into the ground that are, pl that are planting. But guess what? As prophets who build, that means sometimes you will be called and assigned to go into different territories on teams with other apostles and prophets so that you can plant. I know this is good. This is great stuff. All right. Now this is all, we're getting all this just from uh, Jeremiah one. And we're getting, this is where this is coming from one in 10. All right. But the other thing, number seven, that prophets are due, are, 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 that prophets do is prophets provide revelation. All right. We see this here. And the word of the Lord came to me asking, what do you see, Jeremiah? And then Jeremiah said, I see a branch of an almond tree. I replied, what do you mean you see a branch of an almond tree? Prophets, when you begin to talk like that and, see, and, and, and God begins to ask you what you see, prophets then have to recognize that there's revelation. Prophets provide revelation prophets have revelation and you cannot ignore the revelation that god gives you all right hey folks and this is good for you don't forget to to like this page and, and like this post but go ahead and share let the people know what we're talking about so number six prophets plant but number seven prophets also provide revelation but along the way, prophets don't just provide revelation. They also provide wisdom. On the inside of a prophet, most prophets, are there now there are some prophets, I mean, oh my goodness, especially the ones who are growing that are just really immature. But most prophets um, who are apostolic and most prophets who understand their assignment, when you begin to speak to them, you can hear the voice of wisdom on the inside of a prophet. So you've got to begin to receive prophets for who they are. They will as well, number eight, provide wisdom. All right. Number nine, prophets will also provide counsel. Here's why I'm saying, here, let me stop. That means when you're in the midst of decision making and you're in the midst of just needing help, you need to go find your prophet. You need to um, stop believing the hype of people and institutions who tell you that you shouldn't seek after a prophet. That's a lie. And because of what has been taught to us or what we've seen with psychic phenomenons, um, uh, people in Christendom have tried to make it seem as though prophets, you know, are not ones that we should go to, but God created prophets for a reason so that we could provide wisdom, counsel, and revelation. 
So anytime you're in the midst of a, a situation and you need help, you better go find your profit. That's why we have phone lines just for that because, because people need help, all right? People need help. Let me tell my daughter to come get her dog and take her dog out. Although she acts like she's my dog and she wants to come out. So if you hear a dog, that's what's going on. All right. So God bless you guys. We appreciate you all. Don't forget to share this, share this, share. All right. This is good stuff. So number nine is we provide counsel, prophets provide counsel. Number 10, number 10, you can go ahead and take her out. Number 10, it's direction. Okay, now there's a, uh, so prophets also provide direction. If you know that's what's on your life, you, why be afraid to provide direction? And why try to act like God has not called you to provide direction? But I'm telling you, because we have a little bit been bamboozled in the body of Christ to believe that prophets, um, that we shouldn't go to prophets, um, you, you begin to pervert what God, has wants to be perfect perfected all right and what god wants to be pure you cannot begin to use psychic phenomenon and psychic um tendencies as a foundation of what prophets are all right hey there folks you can't do that but when you begin to do that, you begin to pervert God's pure stream because you are literally acting like the psychics are the ones who are laying the foundation. And that's not what we see in the word of God. All right. So number 10, uh, uh, prophets provide direction. That means prophets point you in certain directions. All right. Pro prophets point in a certain direction. That means you come to me, I might get have a revelation and I will begin to point you in the right way to go. But besides direction, number 11, prophets also provide guidance. If I provide you guidance, then guess what's going to happen? I'm going to now lead you to a place. All right. So direction points you, guidance leads you. All right. So prophets will guide you if you ask. And because I have those who submit to me and under me or whatever, I'm going to guide them in ways that I'm not going to guide y'all who are just on this Facebook page. There are those who are in covenant with me that I'm going to actually guide and lead. But then there are some of you who just need a little bit of help. And instead of leading you, I'm going to point you in the right direction and you go to your own apostle, your own whoever, and get the rest so that they can lead you. Ooh, I'm teaching good tonight. God is good. All right. Number 12, prophets also hear. All right. Prophets can also hear for you in ways that you may not be able to hear for yourself. That's why as, a, as an apostle, I need to have the right prophets around me because sometimes I need a prophet to hear for me because my vision is so in focus on something ahead of me that I may not hear what's going on around me at this very moment. I know what I know, but sometimes I need a prophet who can hear what I can't hear or who can take the time to tap in and hear what we need to hear right now in this moment so that I can stay focused on the vision of head. Ah, hallelujah. All right, so prophets also cause you to here they can hear for you uh, number 13 prophets can also see for you that's what the word of god that's what it said in in first in, in jeremiah it said he said um and the word of the lord came to me asking what do you see jeremiah oh my goodness if god is asking jeremiah what do you see why is it a sin or why am i crazy if i ask a prophet what do you see and why do you as prophets not want to tell me what you see? That's because you've been bamboozled and you've been taught wrong about a gifting versus an office. Sometimes some of you prophets have been taught so much to hold back that you are literally not respecting and honoring what God has called and assigned you to be as a, as a kingdom prophet. All right. 
Oh my goodness. I am so sick and tired of profits. When somebody comes to you for help, you begin to say, Ooh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, let me think about this. What? You don't need to think about this. People are coming to you in dire need if it's an emergency. Now, if they just come into play play, it's okay. But when people come to you in dire need, in distress, and they say, what do you see? How come you got to see? I don't know if God wants me to show you. What do you mean? Tell them what you see because you're the one that God created in the kingdom structure for you to see for others because sometimes people cannot see for themselves. And that's why when you begin, when God begins to bring or assign seers, sometimes seers don't even know they're seers because they see so much. And then sometimes people who think they're seers aren't really seers. Just because you have dreams and visions does not mean that you're a seer. I have dreams and visions. I am not a seer. All right. All right. But there are others around me who see all the time. I mean, they have to literally cause their mind to be settled in such a way that they don't let the supernatural realm make them go crazy and cause them to not be able to function in this natural realm. Ah, this is good stuff. You, you got, look, y'all need to meet me for prophetic convocation on the 27th through the 30th here in Jacksonville. This is the kind of teaching that we have. And I'm going to be teaching the school of the prophets. And this is the kind of stuff that you get. Now, this is my low level teaching. This is, I just, on Facebook, I kind of do low level teaching if you understand, but it's good stuff with revelation. All right. But we need seers to see for us. Now I know, so I can tell you what I see because I've been knowing a long time. All right. But there are seers who see beyond what you see and in the midst of crazy situations, I'm talking about you on the job, you about to lose your job, you, you feel like people are coming against you, you don't know what to do, you better go find yourself a seer who can tell you what they see. And there's nothing wrong with asking a seer what do they see. There's nothing wrong with asking a prophet what do you hear. Because this is what we're called to do. We're called to do more than prophesy. But because your average folks who are teaching prophetic ministry don't understand the depth of it, they're teaching you on a low level, all right? They're teaching you on a low level based off of their limited knowledge. Oops, it's just the truth. All right, let me go on. Uh, number 14, um, prophets also provide vision. If God asked Jeremiah, what do you see? That means he can see for someone, but that also means that he probably also can provide vision. So prophets are visionaries as well, especially the ones who accept their global call. Many prophets have been so battered, busted, disgusted that they really have deduce their calling to like local and that's not what prophets are prophets are global prophets started with being global that they, 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 they were birthed to be global they were birthed to to to, to rule governments to, to to see and to work on high level missions all right so if someone's trying to just confine you to a church as a prophet you, you there's a problem all right all right, so prophets uh, provide vision, okay? Prophets can also and will also nine times out of 10 provide confirmation, all right? I'm providing confirmation to all of y'all today because I am a prophet apostle, all right? So I'm gonna always, always, provide confirmation, especially when I'm teaching prophets because I'm assigned to teach prophets. I'm assigned to, to, to teach prophets, to raise prophets, to nurture prophets, to mentor prophets, to train prophets, to teach prophets. I'm assigned to call prophets to prosper because Second Chronicles 20 and 20 says, believe the word of the Lord, you'll be established. Believe the word of the prophet and you shall prosper. 
So as a prophet, apostle, I'm called to help you prosper in every area of your life. So prophets provide vision, prophets provide confirmation, all right? And prophets also shift atmospheres, all right? Prophets shift atmospheres, not, not just with their presence, but they shift atmospheres with their mouth, all right? So number 14 is provide vision. Number 15 is confirmation. Number 15, 16 is prophets shift atmospheres. We shift atmospheres because that's what we see in 1 Kings 17. One, and Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, as the Lord God of Israel liveth before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word, according to my word. So my word as a global prophet and as one who understands the depth of the potency of the words that exist on the inside of me, my words shift atmospheres, all right? So my words shift atmospheres. Also, prophets are on a, you know, all the time called to pray. That's number 17, prophets are called to pray. If you're not a praying prophet, you have a problem, all right? But my, my lifestyle is a life full of prayer. That's what we do. Prayer is communication with God. So I communicate with God all the time as a prophet. And because I communicate with God all the time as a prophet, guess what else I do? I am able to now intercede for others and that is praying on behalf of someone else so that they can see something begin to happen in their lives. Now, I have my own definition for prophetic intercession, but that's what prophets do, prophetic intercession. Prophetic intercession is when we begin to intercede on behalf of others to cause supernatural intervention to take place that will literally shift people, places, and things because of our prayer life because we pray, all right? So besides that though, prophets are also called to release miracles, all right? Prophets release miracles. We, we see this. I mean, look at Elijah when, he, when the, 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 the widow's son was brought back to life. What? That was a miracle. Prophets are called to release miracles. Prophets are called to release deliverance. All right? Now, these signs shall follow those who believe. They shall cast out devils, all that kind of stuff. But prophets are called to deliver people. All right? Number 19, prophets are called to deliver. Deliver, 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 deliver. All right, and then last but not least, this is number 20. Again, I'm just doing 20 tonight. I mean, I could probably do 100, but I'm just doing 20. And then number 20, which is the basis for all of this, prophets are called to release prosperity, all right? Prophets are called to cause people to prosper. Now, we're talking about prospering in every area of our life, all right? That's what prophets are called to do. Believe the word of the Lord, you'll be established. Believe the word of the prophet, you shall prosper. Many people are not prospering in life because they don't have a prophet they can go to. Many churches, organizations, households, families are not prospering because they do not have a prophet of God who they know is assigned to them, who they know can cause prosperity to hit their life. I, oh my goodness, Lord God, Jesus, thank you. So today, now I cover people, okay? I cover people, I cover people, but uh, this young lady that I cover in ministry, well, really her family, she said today, uh, she said today, she sent me a text saying today that 
this is the first day her son went to school in seven years and liked school. Came home and said, school is great. Math is great. He had been diagnosed with ADHD, all that stuff. Didn't show up with any of that kind of stuff today. Are you hearing me? And what happened? She said she went to look and see what was the difference in her life. The only thing that had changed was her covering. And she began to thank me for what God causes me to do in her life and for her family. That's causing prosperity come in the lives of people in every area of their life. All right. That's what prophets are called to do. What prophet apostles who are, are called to do. Now, again, I'm, I'm an apostle, but, you know, I'm a prophet apostle. But are you are you hearing me? And so that's why some of you have to stop tiptoeing around and not connecting with your prophet. Prophets need prophets, but prophets need apostles more than they need prophets. But really, you need an apostle who has walked the way of a prophet. Ah, now that's good stuff. All right. Because when you connect with a pro an apostle who has walked the way of an, a, a prophet or who is a prophet apostle, guess what? They can teach you stuff and help you grow in ways that others cannot because that's what they've been through themselves, all right? I've been through some things as a, as a prophet. I know some things as a prophet. I know your struggles. I know your hurt. I know your pain. I know your moments of betrayal. I know your moments of people calling you Jezebel, people calling you everything but a child of God. I know your moments of people trying to say that you're a witch. I know all that because I've been there, done that. I know the moments of those closest to you looking at you like you're crazy, getting ready to, 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 to stab you in the back. I know the moments of just sabotage hitting your ministry and your church all the time and you don't know what to do. I know these moments because I've been through them, not just as a pastor teacher or what have you, no, as a prophet, because I am a prophet. And that's what I'm calling y'all to declare over your life. Last year, prophetic convocation, one of the best moments happened is when I stood up to deliver my convocation message, I began to say, that this is a season where God is calling the prophets to say, I am a prophet because you have not been given permission to decree over your life that you are a prophet. You haven't begun to embrace who you are as a prophet, yet you've been embracing everything else that everybody else has called you. And so the sting and the stain of being called Jezebel, the stain of being caused one who is coming against ministry, against pastors, that stain has followed you because no one has been able to tell you, I've been there, done that. And what I know right now is that I am more confident than I've ever been before as to who I am and who I'm assigned to. I'm assigned to prophets. I'm assigned to call you to prosper. I'm assigned to mentor you because I've been there, done that. And when I was affirmed a prophet years ago, I, the, 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 the presbytery of prophets began to tell me that I would be a mother to prophets, that I would be a teacher of teacher to prophets. And I could not fathom that at that moment. Now, fast forward to 2018, where even two years after that, in 2006, I was affirmed an apostle, but I kept on calling myself a prophet until the apostles began to say, Dewan, you were affirmed an apostle years after you were affirmed a prophet and you are doing the work of a, an apostle for prophets. That's who you are, so embrace it. So as I began to embrace who I was, who I am as an apostle, then all of a sudden the prophets began to be released but I had to go through, through some things as a prophet that many of you are going through right now. You're going crazy, don't know what to do, don't know who to call on, don't have people even in your churches who can help you because they are not called and assigned to help you. They're not, they're not. And until you're able to receive that and understand that you need a true prophetic apostolic mentor, you will remain in the same place longer than God would have 
have you to remain because you're trying to push the prophetic on a place and in a system that is not able to receive it because that's not what they're called to do. Don't expect a pastoral evangelist or an evangelistic pastor to have what it takes to really push you forth as a prophet. Now, some of them will have enough wisdom to release you to go and get help and to get educated and mentored, but some will take it too far and think that even though they have not been educated and walked through this thing, that they can do for you what they can't and haven't been able to do for themselves. And that is a lie. That's why you need somebody who understands what it takes to raise a prophet, what it takes to engage a prophet, what it takes to mentor, to nurture, to educate, and what it means to really be a called and assigned to prophets. I am not trying to compete with you because I know who I am. I'm not trying to get on your platform because I already have one, all right? I'm not trying to prophesy more than you because I know that I know what I, I know how to do this thing, all right? I can teach you. If you want me to prophesy for one minute, I can prophesy for one minute. If I need to do it for 20 minutes, I can do it for 20 because I'm confident in who God has created me to be and I'm well able to do what I'm skilled to do as a prophet apostle. But if you're connected to crazy junk where everybody's trying to compete and everybody's trying to go after getting the mic on a Sunday and there's no real team ministry, guess what, prophets? You are not going to flourish. Prophets need to be assigned in a place where there is team ministry going on and where the leader, the apostle, appreciates the, the, the voice of the prophet. All right? We've got to begin to appreciate the voice of the prophet and even the quirkiness of a prophet but if you're irritated by the prophet, then every time that the prophet opens his or her mouth, all you're going to do is be irritated and prophet of God, you're going to be just as frustrated because you are in a place where you are being capped. All right. Prophets of today, most prophets today are in ministries and churches and places where they are capped. There's a cap to what they can and can't do because there are many uh, leaders who don't understand what it takes to nurture and to raise up a prophet so he or she can flourish in the place that God has sent them. Because many times pastors and others who are not assigned to prophets see the prophet as a competitor instead of seeing the prophet as a partner. All right. But because I understand been there, done that. I understand that prophets are not just called to a local body. True prophets are called to the globe. So true prophets have to be released and have to be encouraged to go other places as they stay in order. So I encourage my prophets and those prophets connected to me to go and be about God's business because you have to be a global prophet, all right? If you are, are caught up in your local, I'm not telling you to leave your church either. Sidebar, I'm not telling you to leave your church. I'm just telling you, you need to be with a global company of prophets if you're at a church that's always concentrating on the local because you're never going to reach um, the depth of your mantle where you are. I mean, you, you guys got to hear me. That's why it's so important. If you know this is making sense to you, you got to come to prophetic convocation. Come to Prophetic Convocation, go to Eventbrite and sign up for Prophetic Convocation. But if you're in the South Florida, South Georgia area, North Florida area, then you want to meet me August 25th in, where am I going? Thomasville, Thomasville, Georgia for the Prophetic Mandate Boot Camp. It's going to be me and Prophet Katavia. She's one of my spiritual daughters, one of my prophets here with GICMP. She's also an overseer in that uh, South Georgia area, the Tallahassee, all that area, because we are really going to be talking about what the prophetic mandate looks like and why sometimes you feel like you might not be a prophet. What's the difference between a prophet and a prophesier? Why do you feel like you're, you, you have to compete with your pastor when really you just want somebody who will, who will validate you 
and who will confirm what you are doing. Oh my goodness. But sometimes pastors cannot confirm because they can't recognize the prophet on the inside of you because they don't understand you. Are you hearing me? Oh my goodness, God is good and worthy to be praised. It's about time for me to wind this thing down. But I'm telling you, if this is blessing you, I want you, if you, if look, let me think. I, you know what? Prophetic mentorship, my mentorship is still on sale. I just remember it's my birthday month. So all month long, if you go to propheticmentorship.com, you can join me and the Global Institute of Church and Marketplace Profits and my basic mentorship package. You can join me for just 27 bucks a month. You get way more than $27 worth of stuff. So it's normally double that. But I'm just telling you why sometimes it's, an, it's important for you to invest. Some of y'all need to just invest for one month so you can see what you're really missing. All right. Because I'm called and assigned to prophets, we go all out. I go all in. And guess what? You will be the right type of prophet if you're connected to me. Prophetic mentorship. Dot com. And if you start acting crazy around me, oh my goodness, I'm going to tell you about yourself because prophets have to live a life of integrity. Prophets have to live a life of character. Prophets have to live a life of stringent obedience. So while others can go and do crazy stuff, prophets cannot. All right. While others can go and do some, some, some halfway crazy junk, Prophets cannot do this stuff. You can't just go with the flow and be like, I'm a prophet of God. The devil is a lie. You better get yourself some deliverance and get somewhere where somebody can talk to you, can speak to you, and can connect your past, present with your future and tell you where you are, where you need to be, and what it's going to take for you to prosper. Are you hearing me? And so I'm just talking, look, I'm telling you, if this thing, there, there's some of you who've been listening the whole time. What, what? You need to invest in the mentorship, prophetic mentorship. Take advantage of my birthday special. It's just $27 per month, all right? And then when you get in there, guess what begins to happen? Um, you know, once a month, we come together for mentorship and training. Uh, sometimes it lasts an hour. Sometimes it lasts two hours. I think this time we broke a record. I want to say it was like three hours. It was crazy, but there was so much stuff happening. And then at the end of that, we have prayer but you get to hear from prophets from all over the world and um, who can be there to really help you. So that's what prophetic mentorship is about. I'm, you know, I'm so sick of hearing from prophets and other people who begin to say, oh my goodness, uh, you know, you, prophet, what do you mean? You're gonna teach prophets how to prophesy? What prophets don't need a mentor? The devil is a lie. Elijah went and released and laid his mantle up on Elisha and that was the start of really mentorship. You guys have got to stop being so bamboozled and so easily caught up in what the world is telling you about something they don't understand. You need mentorship, you need training, you need to be educated, and many times you have to invest in this thing, all right? It's one thing for God to confirm, it's a whole other thing for for God to allow somebody to see in you what needs to be affirmed. I publicly affirm prophets because prophets need affirmation and they need to know that they're on the right track. How crazy would it be for you to think that you're on the right track and then you come to find out you're really operating in new age? Oh my goodness, you're really a psychic. How messed up would that be? And, and I'm telling you, some of y'all are fluctuating and crossing on over into new age territory because you are connected to people who are just prophesiers and who are doing things in crazy ways without necessarily understanding and applying biblical principles to what they're supposed to be doing. Are you hearing me? So folks, y'all just got to come on up to the next level and it's time to invest in your future. It's time to invest in your prophetic mandate. It's time to invest into what God is calling you to do. And I, I'm telling you, if this has blessed you, if you stayed on here for even more than 10 minutes, you're a real candidate for our prophetic mentorship and you need to go to propheticmentorship.com and invest the 27 bucks. Now it's 27 per month, but I'm telling you, 
for profits is the best thing that you can do because you'll also get a discounted rates when it's time for prophetic convocation and everything else. You need to just go there. Oh my goodness, take a chance. And and guess what? If it's not for you, then let the 27 bucks just be uh, a seed into your prophetic life, all right? Sow a seed of 27 bucks today and go and uh, go and invest. The, the, the cost for the event in September is if you're a member of GICMP, you go and do this and uh, do this. Uh, it's going to be $99. If you're not a member, it's $150. I think for couples, I can't remember what it is for couples. If you're a husband and wife team, is it $250? I, I can't remember. Kelly, do you remember? But it's very reasonable. All right. Um, and we start off that Thursday night. Sophia Ruffin is going to be there with us. Powerful prophet from Chicago. God has turned her life upside down. She used to be, as you know, uh, many of you know, a homosexual, a lesbian, but God did some things in her. Now she calls herself the comeback kid. Um, she's going to be there with us that Thursday night. If you have people who are struggling with their identity, they're struggling with who they are, not just as a prophet, but as a male, female, come on out. Uh, that that Friday morning, uh, let's see. Pastor Jay Patrick is going to be there with us from Richmond, Virginia. Y'all know he's a builder. He's a builder of builders, but he also has a phenomenal uh, connection with millennials. But we're, we're having him here to teach us about building, all right? What what building uh, look, looks like. So he's going to be there with us. And then that morning, I'm hosting a prophetic panel uh, with uh, Chasden Strickland, um, I got prophets from GICMP, Renee, uh, Jacob, Pamela Hutcherson, Kofi Hemingway, and then also Ron Tolliver. He's going to be on that prophetic panel. And then later that afternoon, uh, Apostle Ron Tolliver will be there releasing the word as well. And then that Friday night, that's our big night. Friday night is when I affirm prophets. I'm going to be affirming a couple prophets that night. I'm also going to be releasing the word uh, that Friday night. And then the next day, we're doing uh, the School of the Prophets. I'm going to be teaching that. And then also Jay Patrick will be there teaching again on building. So I'm telling you, it's going to be spectacular this year in Jacksonville, Florida, September 27th through the 30th. And then that Sunday, if you want to come and worship with us, you can worship with us at Global Prophetic Life Training and Worship Embassy. We call ourselves the Embassy or GPL Jacks. Uh, we're going to do that. We may have a special surprise that day working on some things. But uh, either way it goes, it's going to be phenomenal. We have a, 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 a wonderful a prophetic worship team where it's all of us combined together. And I'm telling you, it's a prophetic infused environment. And you will leave there not the same way you came because you will begin to understand what it really means to be a prophet of God and why you have to take responsibility and accountability for who you are. Kelly, that cannot be the married couple's rate. That's got to be wrong. It's got to be, is that, I can't imagine that's it, but maybe it is. I think it's different than that, or it's a 175. Go check that rate, the married couple's weight. Check it and see. I don't know. Anyway, maybe it is it. I don't, I don't remember. Or is it the other way? All right, that's me, y'all. I'm just talking. God bless you. All right, let's pray. God, I thank you so much for every prophet, 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 prophet. God, I thank you for your prophets, your prophetic voices, your prophetic mouthpieces, your prophetic worshipers, your prophetic intercessors. God, I thank you, God, for what you're doing in and through each and every one of them. Right now, God, arrest your prophets in the spirit. God, let them understand that they need mentorship. They need training. They need education. They need somebody they can talk to, someone who understands who they are in the mighty name of Jesus. So God, I plead the blood of Jesus over your prophets. Declare Rabbi, look at that. That's funny. I don't know what in the world happened. We declare and decree no weapon shall be able to prosper in their life in Jesus' name. And I thank you, God, that even right now, you're going to uh, cause the prophetic to be increased in their life. You're going to cause things to open up in their life. God, I thank you for those who are in the North Florida, South Georgia area, God, who will be coming to uh, join us in Thomasville. God, I thank you that they will not be discouraged, but I thank you, God, that they're ready for this event, this training event, this boot camp. I thank you, God, that even now you're calling them forth from the north, south, east, and west. And I thank you, God, for those who are coming forth. 
in the name of Jesus, God, for those who are coming forth from, hallelujah, all over the world for prophetic convocation. God, I thank you for flourishing, letting them flourish in Jesus' name. God, we call forth the prophets to Jacksonville, Florida for prophetic convocation. God, from wherever they are, let them not be discouraged, but let them know, God, that you're able to do exceedingly abundantly above all they can think, ask, or imagine. God, I speak prosperity over their lives in every area of their life. God, as they make this commitment to be about their father's business, I thank you, God, that you will begin to open doors that no man can shut. I thank you, God, for new opportunities coming forth in the name of Jesus. God, new increase coming forth, new ideas, new vision, God, coming forth, new words of wisdom. Hallelujah. God, I thank you for what you're doing, and I thank you for the new prophetic flow coming forth with your prophets. In Jesus' name, God, we thank you, we praise you, and we honor you. Amen, amen. All right, so Kelly was right. It is 125. She showed it to me. You know why? Because last year we had a whole we had a whole bunch of well, yeah, female prophets coming, and they decided to bring their husbands. So we just want y'all to we want to make it easy for you. All right, so come on through and sign up today. Uh, don't forget to go to propheticmentorship.com. My birthday special is 27 per month. That's a spectacular saving, spectacular savings. Uh, so don't forget to invest in that. And if you do that, then when it's time for convocation, your rate will be only 99. But the married couples rate is 125. Thank you, Prophet Kelly. And uh, it's 150 for those who are just, you know, regular folk coming through. All right, God bless you. Don't forget to like this page, like this post, and do share. Don't forget to share this with those prophets that you know need help, all right? We'll see you again next week and probably along the way uh, this week as well. All right, God bless you.